Hey friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kaylee and this is Foodie Friday. So if you have been a frequent Foodie Friday attendee, you guys have been pretty much following me along my whole pregnancy journey. You got to see me pretty much, I think I was still in my first trimester when I started this and I pretty much did a Foodie Friday every week all the way up until I delivered. So as you guys can see, maybe not, it's kind of hard to tell in this shot, I am no longer pregnant. I did take a few weeks off um, just to adjust to motherhood. Um, and kind of get into the swing of things with that, but it is amazing. I have a healthy, beautiful son and he is doing well. If you would like more uh, pregnancy, frequent pregnancy updates, you can follow me on Instagram at Measure Me Whole. I would love for you guys to follow me on there, see more frequent updates with my overall life, but also I share more recipes frequently on there as well. But I decided since I took six weeks off, I'm officially six weeks postpartum today, um, that I would jump right back into Foodie Friday and deliver a super delicious recipe. So I am doing apple cider donuts. And I feel like this is such a delicious fall staple. Donuts are one of my favorite sweet treats and one of my favorite like breakfast go-tos. Like if I'm deciding to be super indulgent to have you know a nice warm donut with a hot cup of coffee. So I decided why not make a delicious fall treat that you will enjoy. So this is one that kind of was inspired by some fall memories that I would have. So growing up, my mom would always make homemade apple cider and we would have that during you know the fall and winter months. And it was just something I really loved. She even put like some little red hot candies in the apple cider. And that was just something that I always really looked forward to every fall. So I figured why not combine my two favorite things, hot apple cider and a hot donut and have them come together and create a delicious treat. As always here at Foodie Friday, I try to create recipes that are made with healthier alternatives. So this means that I, you know, usually try to pick ingredients that are more natural or just healthier for our bodies in general. I've also created this recipe to be gluten-free because I know I have a lot of um, gluten intolerant people out there or friends with celiac disease. With all that being said, let's stop rambling and get to baking. So the first thing we're going to start off with is making the dough. So to make our dough, we're just using a few very simple, easy to find ingredients. And the first thing we're gonna be using is six tablespoons of active dry yeast. The next ingredient that we're gonna be using is four tablespoons of coconut sugar. This is just a great alternative to processed white sugar because it is lower in glycemic index, which means it's not readily converted to fat like white processed sugar is. The next ingredient that we have is five cups of gluten-free flour. I've linked my favorite gluten-free flour below, but if you're not gluten-free, you can always use five cups of bread flour. Both work great in this recipe. So that concludes our dry ingredients. Then we're gonna move into all of our wet ingredients. So for our wet ingredients, we have two cups of unfiltered apple cider. So I like to use the unfiltered kind because it has that extra pulp and flavoring from the apples in it. The next thing we have are two whole eggs. Then we also are going to use two egg yolks. We then have one half cup of coconut oil. Be sure to measure this before melting it, but we will melt this for our recipe. And the final ingredient is two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So I just wanna preface this part of the recipe with, if you do not have a KitchenAid mixer, that is totally okay. You can just use a large bowl and a wooden spoon. I just decided to use my KitchenAid just because it makes this just a smidge easier to make. But like I said, I don't want the fact that I'm using a KitchenAid to deter you from making this recipe. But to start off, we are going to add our two cups of apple cider as well as our six tablespoons of active dry yeast to our large mixing bowl along with two cups of our gluten-free flour. And I like to use the King Arthur measure for measure flour in this recipe, that's what I'm using here. Um, I have not tried it with any other types of flour, so if you have bad luck with a different kind of gluten-free flour, I'm sorry, but this is the uh, King Arthur measure for measure flour, but I'll have that linked in the description box below. But once you add your flour to your mixer um, or your large bowl, you'll just take your wooden spoon or your uh, paddle attachment and mix this until a wet and sticky consistency comes together. Once you have this exact consistency, you'll take a clean kitchen towel, you'll cover your bowl, and you'll just set it in a warm area for about 20 minutes just to allow it to rise. After 20 minutes, 
you'll take your dough out and it should have almost doubled in size and you will just using your dough hook or your wooden spoon, you'll just lightly deflate the dough and then you'll add the remainder ingredients. So your sugar, your eggs, egg yolks, the melted coconut oil, and vanilla extract. Once you get those wet ingredients in there, you'll just use your mixer or your spoon and mix those ingredients together. Um, once the wet ingredients are incorporated into your sticky dough, you'll have a pretty wet and sticky consistency. Then you will just take um, half a cup at a time of flour and add it in. So I take my measuring cup, take out half a cup of flour of the remaining flour that I have, and I just add it in. You will use all cups, all five cups of flour um, in this recipe, but you just need to add this slowly in so you don't get any clumps. When the dough pulls away from the sides of the bowl, that's when you know it's ready, but it will still be extremely sticky. You have your sticky dough consistency. You're going to cover and refrigerate for one hour. While our dough is rising, let's go ahead and make our filling. So I typically use two Granny Smiths and one Honeycrisp apple, but really all you need is three whole apples and you're going to peel and chop your apples up for this recipe. But like I said, any apples you prefer are delicious, so just use what you like best. The next ingredient that we're going to be using is one teaspoon of cinnamon and one fourth teaspoon of sea salt. Then we will use two tablespoons of apple cider, and then we also have one and one half tablespoons of coconut oil. Then we have one tablespoon of our measure for measure gluten-free flour. This will thicken up our apple filling, and then we have one half cup of coconut sugar. Once your apples are chopped, we can go ahead and start making the filling. So take your coconut oil and add it to a large skillet over medium heat. Once your coconut oil starts to melt, go ahead and add in your apples and the coconut sugar as well as the apple cider and the cinnamon and sea salt. Once these are all added in, go ahead and mix this together and allow it to cook until the apples are softened and the mixture begins to bubble. Once your mixture begins to bubble, remove it from the heat, add in your tablespoon of flour and mix this together. It should thicken your filling up quite a bit, almost like an apple pie filling. Now we're going to make our donuts. So grab your dough out of the fridge. It should have doubled in size, so it should be very risen. We're going to take this out of our bowl onto a very well floured surface. To be honest, I did not flour my table well enough, so I had to add more. But we're going to cut this in half because this recipe makes 30 donuts. So I don't know about you, but I know I couldn't eat 30 donuts fast enough. So I usually cut this in half, freeze half of the dough, to use at a later date and I just make 15 donuts with one half of the dough. Um, depending on how big you cut your donuts, this should make between 12 and 15. But we're going to flour our dough just ever so slightly to make it not as sticky. So be sure to really flour your surface so you don't get any um, stuck donuts once you cut them out. But we're going to just kind of work with our dough just a little bit to um, kind of make it less tacky. Um, so we're gonna just work in a little bit of that flour so that way it won't stick. But be sure to not overwork your dough because then you will have a tough donut. So once our dough has been uh, floured and is not as sticky and um, will kind of come up from our surface, we're going to roll this out. I would suggest um, flouring your rolling pin. This will just make everything easier. But once you have everything well floured and you're ready to roll, go ahead and roll your dough out until it is about one fourth inch thick. Once your dough is all rolled out, we're going to cut out some donuts. So I'm using a large mason jar lid here, but you can use either the opening of a cup or a cookie cutter, as long as it's a larger round circle. Um, and we're going to just cut out the um, circles for our donuts. And once you get all of your circles cut out, we're going to place them on either a parchment paper lined or here I have my baking sheet lined with press and seal wrap, but either way, line your baking sheet and no matter what you do, spray your baking sheet with cooking spray. I promise you will thank me later. If you do not, you will have a huge mess on your hands. 
Once you get a bunch of circles and you no longer can make any more donut circles, go ahead and take your scraps, roll them back up and roll them out again and continue to make more donut circles until you have no more dough left. Now that we have all of our cute little donut circles, we're going to stuff them with that delicious apple filling that we made. So I do want to let you guys know that the filling recipe for this is just for half of the dough. So this is just enough filling to fill 15 donuts. If you are making all 30, I would highly suggest doubling that recipe. It's really simple. It'll just double all the ingredients, but you'll follow the same exact directions. But plop a good amount of the filling on one of the donut circles, and then you will cover each donut circle with a matching top, and you'll just lightly press these closed. Don't press them too hard because we will seal these nice and tight in just a second, but just lightly press them closed and just kind of space out your donuts. Um, the dough should be able to be picked up, but taking a smaller circle, I'm using a glass that we have at our house, um, you'll just kind of press around and this will give your donuts a nice seal. That way when you fry these, nothing will come out. I don't have this on camera, but I do have two trays um, of donuts. So this is just one tray I'm showing you guys. Um, but once you seal all of your donuts, you'll want to space them out because they're going to rise one more time. So you'll cover these with another layer of plastic wrap or press and seal wrap and make sure you spray that um, and allow these to rise for about 20 minutes or until whenever you press the dough, it springs back. While your donuts are going through their final rise, you'll go ahead and heat your frying oil. So I'm using um, 24 ounces of canola oil. Um, you're welcome to use safflower oil, that works as well, but canola oil I have found works the best. So we're going to heat this in a large pot over um, medium heat. I usually let this warm up slowly, so you'll get the oil about 360 degrees. Once your oil reaches temperature, you can stick a um, wooden spoon handle in there, and once you see the bubbles kind of uh, come up from the spoon, that's when you know your oil is hot enough. I'm using a larger pot, but if your pot is smaller, stick about one to two donuts in um, as long as they're not crowded and fry these for about 30 seconds to a minute on each side. You'll look for a golden brown color and that's when you know it's ready to flip. Once you're done frying your donuts, remove them from the oil and allow them to cool on a wire cooling rack for about five minutes or until they're able to be touched. They should still be warm and we're going to coat these with cinnamon sugar. And all you need for your cinnamon sugar recipe is one cup of white sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. You'll mix these together and then you will coat your donuts while they're still warm on all sides. And then you'll place them back on the wire cooling rack and allow them to continue cooling for about 10 to 15 minutes. The donuts are done. Unfortunately, I did not get on camera me shoving one of the donuts in my face. Oh my gosh, they are so good. The filling is just super indulgent. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. As always, be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and be sure if you are a new subscriber to leave a message in the comments below so I can say hey to you and get to know you a little better. If you would like more frequent updates with my postpartum journey or my journey into motherhood or just just more recipes to follow and more healthy ideas that you can um, acquire. You can always follow me on Instagram at Measure Me Whole. I look forward to getting together next week where we cook another nutritious and delicious dish. All right, you guys, see you next time.